In this video, I want to show you how to set up CMSYS core for your project. So what is CMSYS? CMSYS stands for Cortex Microcontroller Software Interface Standard. In layman's terms, it's basically a group of files with functions and defines with the goal of making programming in all Cortex microcontrollers uniform. This means that if you can program in one Cortex micro using CMSYS, you should be able to hit the ground running in a different Cortex microcontroller independent of the compiler and manufacturer. So that's what CMSYS is, but uh, it actually has several components. One of the components is CMSYS core. There's CMSYS driver, DSP, RTOS, PAC, and SVD. Like I said, we're I'm gonna show you how to use core or how to install it in your project. So CMC score sets up the really low level stuff. For example, the register and peripheral addresses, the uh, interrupt vectors and the uh, system configuration. So notice that there are eight files in CMC. The startup file sets up the interrupt vectors. In two of my previous videos, I showed you how to set up the interrupt vectors step by step and uh, now that you know how to do it you don't have to do it because now you can use CMSYS so you can use this file and it will do all of that for you it would have all the uh, interrupts implemented so that would be the startup file that's what it does it uh, implements the interrupt vectors the uh, other file system device that configures the clock you also have a device file which defines the addresses for the peripherals and then you have some other files that are that have more functions and defines let me show you the contents of some of these files so we look at the startup file that we're going to use the first thing that it does is that it calls a function called system in it that function is actually in the system device file so we go to our system device file that is the system init function and so what it's doing it's it's basically setting up the clock registers for you if you don't want the uh, clock register to be set up, then you will just have to change this to zero. If you want to change the frequency of the clock, you can change the value of this define to any of these values. But uh, there's more to this file. I encourage you to read it, and you should be able to figure it out. It's is basic C so in the startup file after this function is called then the file makes the vector table so notice that it, it's not programmed in C like I showed you in my videos this is actually using assembly so this is where all the vectors are defined Remember that we had to do this by hand last time I showed you how to do it. Well, now with this file you don't have to now if a vector that you want to use is not in here. Then you can just go ahead and add it the same way that I showed you in my videos. The other file that I want to show you or I'll actually I already showed you the startup system device and system device that age. The other one I want to show you is a device file so the device file is where the addresses for your peripherals are defined so if you scroll all the way down and i'm going to show you where to get these files from so but i'm right now i just want to show you what the uh, contents of the files are so for example for the ur0 peripheral notice that uh the address is defined so this is actually a base address for the peripheral and then if we go to the UR type so 
So we go to the URL type data structure. Then you will see that all the registers for that peripheral are part of the structure. So if, we want, if you wanted to use the UR0 CTL, then you would just do something like UR0 CTL, and then that would be that would be using this register. A non CMSYS device file will be something like this. So this is actually provided to you by, uh, you can find it online. It's, it's provided to you when you install the uh, development environment. And there's nothing really wrong with this file. The problem is that if you switch to a different microcontroller, to a different Cortex microcontroller, then the syntax will may not be the same. But if you implement CMSYS in every one of your projects, then you will be very familiar with the syntax, which is always to have this type of structure for all the peripherals in the board or microcontroller. So that is a quick tutorial on what CMSYS is or rather CMSYS core. Now let me go ahead and show you how to add these files to your project. So go to this website, click on download CMSYS, click on free download, and then you should have downloaded a folder that uh, has a name similar to this one. Then I want you to go ahead and go inside the CMSYS folder Click on documentation and open the index file and that should open up a browser window. So in that browser window, click on core, click on template files. CMSYS core is composed of eight files. The ones in blue are provided to you by the silicon vendor. In uh, our case, that will be Texas Instruments. The files in purple are provided to you by ARM and they are in the folder that we just downloaded. So to set up these files in your, well actually, like I said, we have the purple files. Now we need to download the blue files. To do that, I want you to go to this link. Click on download, go ahead and download the uh, files. So that's gonna get you a folder that has a name like this one and then go to inside that folder go to ti ln4f so in, in both of these folders we have the blue files and notice that uh, they have a device inside brackets that means that uh, the device is your microcontroller in the case of the Tiva C Launchpad board and the Stellaris board that will be the LM4F 120H5QR microcontroller or if you're using Tiva C that will be this This will be your device. The problem is that Texas Instrument has not made a CMSYS Folder for the TM4C Microcontroller, but that's not a problem because it's exactly the same Microcontroller as the LM4F. It's just that the name is different so even if you have the Tiva C, this video will still work for you. If you have other microcontrollers like a Freescale or an ST, go ahead and Google the uh, the same type of, go ahead and Google CMSYS header files for those particular devices. So now that we have all the eight files that we need, let's go ahead and incorporate them into your project. So this is my project folder that I created using IR and I named my project CMSYS core. You can name it anything you want. Inside that folder, I want you to create an ink folder and an SRC folder. And in the ink folder, we're going to put the device file and the system 
device files, which are the edge files. So that'll be the device.h and system device.h. And you can find those two files in the Texas Instruments folder inside include. So go ahead and find your microcontroller here and go ahead and copy that file into your ink folder in your compiler project. And in the same include folder, you will find the system LM4F file. Go ahead and also copy that file and paste it in the ink folder. Next, we go to the source folder and I'm gonna put the system device.c file there. So that'll be system device.c. That file is found in the source folder of the Texas Instrument folder you downloaded inside IR. So if you're using the GCC compiler, that's the one, uh, never mind, uh, this is the one that you need the uh, system LM4F. So go ahead and copy this file and go ahead and paste it in the SRC folder. So the last file from the blue squares that we need is the startup device.s file. That one is compiler dependent, so we're using IR. We're going to open the IR folder. That's the startup lm4f file. And I want you to go ahead and paste, copy and paste that file next to your main file. So wherever you have your main file, go ahead and paste it there. Just like I have here. So that takes care of the blue files. Now we need to locate the purple files. Those are located in the folder we downloaded from ARM. And they are in the include folder. So the four purple files are here. CPU, that's if you're using uh, Cortex-M4 or a Cortex-M3 microcontroller. We're using CM4. You can also find the other, fi the other files here. So just uh, remember the location of these files because we're going to link to them from the uh, IR development environment. So I want, you, I want you to open your project and go to project options, go to C, C++ compiler, go to your processor, preprocessor tab, and we're going to include the two include directories that we have. So this is the one that we created where we put out the, uh, some of the blue files. And we're going to also include the uh, folder I just showed you where the purple files are. So those are the two paths that you need to put in this uh, in this menu. Go ahead and click OK. Click OK. Right click on your project project name. Go ahead and go to Add Add Files, and you're gonna need to add the startup file as well as the system lm4f file. So just like I've just like I have here these two files go ahead and compile your project notice that I get zero errors but uh, 124 warnings I actually looked into these warnings and I found out that uh, that is cost because we're using the uh, latest IR development environment which is 7.10 so what we need to do to get rid of those warnings is add colon no root after reorder in the startup file so go to your startup file scroll down and whenever you see reorder go ahead and add no root so once you have added no root to the to each of the lines go ahead and compile again so now we get zero errors and zero warnings. 
I want you to go ahead and download the uh, code to your microcontroller. Once your program is running, go to view disassembly. Scroll all the way, all the way to the top. And now notice that all the interrupts have been implemented. So every one of the interrupts that was in my startup file is now in my vector table. So that is definitely a time saving technique as opposed to having to do everything we did in these two tutorials. And now imagine starting up with a different microcontroller and or a, or even a different compiler and you might have no idea how to do it from scratch but now you know that all you have to do is get these emsys files and incorporate them into your project also like i mentioned previously the system init function in the system file should have been executed so if you check the registers for the clock they should be set to whatever the frequency is that you selected for your system file which will be in this line. So now you know what the startup file does, you know what the system file does. The device file is what we have been using all throughout my videos. So I'm not gonna explain how this works since I already have in my previous videos and every time I, I use this file, reference the data sheet, so you should be pretty familiar with this file already. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.